What is up, everybody? This is Ex Machina here again with another Low Fidelity Dreams podcast episode. Today, we're going to talk about a fun topic of your tools and what you need. Uh, this is a very important topic as far as new producers go. Everybody has this confusion that you need the best of the best. Well, today, we're going to talk about what you actually need to get started. So let's get to it. So the sound quality of some of these episodes might vary just because I have been recording a lot of this while traveling, so I'm using just a Rode microphone in my hotel room, so I do apologize if it does sound a little different from the first few episodes, but it will interchange here or there depending on where I'm at. Uh, You might even hear some airplane background noise and stuff. So yeah, let's get to the actual topic today of your tools and what you need. So the misconception is that whenever you start, you're going to need the best hardware, the best gear, the best software, all of the plugins in order to get started. Well, that's actually false. So you can produce, and I mean, a lot of experienced producers know this answer uh, that I'm about to get into, but you can essentially make beats with anything. I mean... The cheapest thing that you can do is probably get like a free software. Uh, I'm not too sure on any of the really good free softwares. Uh, I know that there are a few on like the iOS, Android. You might even be able to get like a cheap version of Ableton, even FL Studio or Logic. Uh, But you could even get some programs like the new Ableton Note, which came out. It was like six bucks. So totally awesome. Totally worth it. Uh, I would really recommend getting something that you can use to just get started. I think just being able to put music down on something or put your idea down on something will really enable you to want more, to push more. But the initial starting point needs to be somewhere simple. You don't need to go out and buy the the most expensive Ableton software pack, which is like $1,200 or whatever. You literally just need to get something to get started. Now, I started with Logic, and then I went from Logic... Oh, sorry, I started from FL Studio, uh, which I used for maybe like a week, and I was terrible at it. Stopped producing for about two years. And then I went to Logic, and I used that for about two years. And then I got fed up with kind of how the updates were going and how it was um, impeding on my workflow uh, because it just wasn't um, as efficient as I thought. And when Ableton, I think it was Ableton 9, as when I first started using Ableton, and honestly, I haven't looked back since. So we're going to go into what I recommend as far as um, tools go, and Ableton is going to be what we're going to focus on, at least because that's where my expertise is. But primarily... Ableton does come with stock plugins. I won't go into too much detail on what all that they offer um, as far as like exact synthesizers and drum machines or whatever, but just know that with Ableton stock tools, you will be able to create literally anything. A lot of the music that I release now is using stock plugins plus a bunch of free stuff. I have the occasional plugin here or there that I use uh, for a stylistic effect, but Otherwise, everything else is made with really just the tools that are within Ableton. And so the first thing I would like to talk about is the stock plugins uh, that come with Ableton. So obviously we have just a a wide array of uh, VSTs, such as like Wavetable, um, Operator, things like that, that will allow you to create sound. So that is, I mean, if you can understand how sound works and how to synthesize sound, you can learn all of that within those plugins that come with Ableton, right? And then you have all of the effects, like the EQ effects, the distortion, the just the flavoring effects uh, that Ableton comes with. And that is only just one part of what it comes with. Now, Ableton also has this other side of it called Max for Live, which is literally some of the craziest tools that are free most of the time. The, some of the craziest tools that you can utilize to create some amazing generated sounds or even just sounds in general because it is a user user created um, market I'd suppose you can literally create your own plugins people will create their own plugins and then upload them for free and I think it's like maxforlive.com you can go there and download just tons of stuff So those are just some of the free tools that Ableton comes with. Now, obviously, you can go scour the internet, and there are literally tons and tons and tons of other plugins that are for free. Uh, I use a ton of metering plugins, so Yulian 
is one that I highly recommend. And then Audacity is another one that I recommend. Um, so some of those tools are used for different purposes, but what I really want to get into, um, cause I just spouted off just a bunch of random plugins here is you want to purchase or download with purpose. So obviously if you're new to producing, you probably have no idea what half this stuff does and you don't need to know any of this stuff. I mean, that's just, uh, the, the honest truth is that you don't need to know everything, right? You just need to start producing because as time goes on, as you produce music, you will find that you need something, right? So you have the sound that you created and you want to achieve something different with that sound. Well, in your head, you kind of have an idea of how to get there, but you don't have the proper tool for it. In that point, I would recommend looking for a plugin or something that would help you get to that result that you want. And so a lot of times what people do is they'll go and find uh, random videos on YouTube of plugins and then they'll see that it does this cool effect here or there and then they decide to buy it. Well, let's be real. The amount of times that you'll actually use that is almost never. Like you'll use it for the first few tracks or maybe the first few months, but then you'll forget about it and then it's just going to collect dust. Really, you just want to purchase plugins that you feel like you would have a proper use for. So one of the... Um, the, the plugin bundles that I highly recommend is the fab filter plugin bundle. And that is going to give you literally all kinds of mixing tools, things, tools that you will actually be able to utilize to meter and properly mix and master your music. So that is an essential for me, but you don't need that because Ableton literally comes with so many, so many tools that you can create your own free mastering chain. You could even YouTube it right now that there, there are so many, uh, artists out there that will create a free mastering chain using stock plugins for really any DAW. Ableton just has a really intuitive way of building racks and building these groups of plugins that allow you to properly reuse them in the future. So I can have a whole group of effects that I like on this one instrument or this one synth, and I can save all of those effects into this one rack, and then I can reuse that rack every single time. So this leads into the next topic of templates. This is very important. I did not realize the importance until I started my side project. So I produced for about eight years, eight and a half years before I finally created my first template. And this was for when I started to delve into the whole lo-fi world. I was like, okay, let me just create a template here so then I can just create a bunch of tracks just to kind of see what I can make. And Literally, I have been building on that same template for now almost a year and a half. And it's grown substantially. I've created different templates for different use cases. Uh, I've created a template for just stock plugins. I've created one with a mix match of stock and not stock plugins. I've created another one for a different style of music within the dark lo-fi glitch realm. Uh, really, just anything that I can do to create a template, I will do it. Uh, just because this will allow you to first save a bunch of time, but second of all, it'll allow you to get your ideas down quick enough to, so you don't actually lose that inspiration, honestly. Because that that is literally where most of the music gets lost is that phase between getting everything ready to actually putting it down in the DAW. Because of that learning curve of your tools and just how the software works and getting everything organized and rendered out, like it, the whole process literally takes so much energy and time that a lot of people, a lot of artists will lose that inspiration, lose that feeling that they had. And then they just start doing a bunch of random stuff to the track, like adding a new synth or adding a new drum or adding this or adding that because they feel like the track is missing something. Well, in reality, you just did too much and there's no contrast. There's so much in the track now that there's no contrast of the high peaks and the low valleys. And so this is very important because again, sound is always vibration and motion. So if you have just a straight sausage of a waveform, or if you have all of these sounds playing with no actual dynamics, you're never going to create a piece that's meaningful because you're never going to be able to change the emotion of the listener. Because again, there are peaks and valleys and to achieve this, you need to master both the sound and the silence. And in order to do so, you need to learn your tools. And starting with the stock plugins that the software comes with is extremely important. 
because this is what's going to allow you to create those sounds that you hear other artists making. The biggest struggle that I had when I started producing really was being original and being um, very good at sound design. I'll actually play a clip of the first track that I have ever produced, and this was an FL Studio. Really terrible. The audio is just not very good. The production was also not very good, obviously, because it was my first beat. But what I want to show as far as this track goes is that everything was produced almost on the on beat. So I don't know if you've ever seen that one weird guy at the show that's always head banging or bobbing his head to the off beat. You're like, what the heck is going on? This dude is like either off rhythm or doesn't know what he's doing. But the reality is either a, yeah, he doesn't know what he's doing and he's terrible at uh, holding a rhythm or this guy's a freaking genius because he understands the offbeat. He understands the proper syncopation that you can really challenge in every single track. You can go ham literally on the offbeat and nobody ever notices they are always so focused on producing on the on beat that you start to lose the complexity of a track. I call this Play-Doh beats. So just like you know, you have Play-Doh when you're a kid, you kind of get a bunch of different colors, you mash them together, you create a cool sculpture. That is what producing on the on beat sounds like. And this obviously doesn't really, this doesn't apply to every single genre, but challenge yourself because you will notice this in higher level productions compared to people that have just started, right? You'll hear the, uh, some guy make a beat, a newer, newer producer make a beat, and then he's got like four or five lead synths and they all play on the kick, right? Or they all play on the snare. So this is very taxing to the ear just because there's just so many sounds going on and there's not enough space in the track. So you can make space by obviously properly mixing the track, but you can also make space by moving sounds around, so forward or backwards within the timeline. And this is how you'll allow yourself to start seeing the other possible rhythms that you can create. So check it out. Here's the old track that I created. And then after that, we'll go into the new track that I produced. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that was obviously extremely terrible, but that was my first beat ever on FL Studio. So I didn't really have any sort of conception of uh, the high peaks and the low valleys, the dynamics of sound, the syncopation, the rhythm, time signature, none of that. And so now let's listen to one of the tracks that are actually from my last album, Midnight Elevators. This track is called Secrets, and we'll play just a little clip from the second part, uh, just so you can kind of understand what I mean. So right off the bat, you can hear the difference. Obviously, that is 10 years of practice and producing. But I will say, though, that after 10 years of failing miserably many times, I have learned the difference between a basic beat and then a decent beat, right? 
Play-Doh beat versus a masterly crafted beat. The way that I see your tools in Ableton or any other DAW is just like the tools that you use when you're making like an ice sculpture, for example. In order to create a, such an intricate design on a piece of ice that is literally melting away. So the analogy there is your muse, your, um, your motivation, your inspiration, all of that is this big block of ice. Your tools that you use to carve this piece is your tools in Ableton or anything that you pick up. And from there, the amount of time that you spend really shows in your work. Like the amount of time that you try to get the intricate sounds, the sound design slowly chipping away at this block, you're going to create something. Now, obviously, when you first start and you have this massive block of ice and you're chipping away big pieces, you're not going to really see the actual intricacies until you keep on chiseling away. That is the most important thing is that you keep on going. Something that I've read in a book, amazing book by Stephen Pressfield, and it is uh, The War of Art. One of the things that he mentions, and I might be kind of butchering this, and I highly recommend reading it, is that we are just instruments. We are instruments of the muse. The muse is like this big pool of creativity that is somewhere in this other dimension, right? And we, as artists, are tools that pull from this so-called pool of creativity. And so as long as you are chipping away at this ice block, you are constantly siphoning from this imaginary place and you have to continue sharpening your tools in order to properly convey the music that you want, the art that you want, the creations that you want from this imaginary creative bubble. And so keep on producing with the basic tools that you have. Set limitations for yourself. Get rid of all the fancy plugins. See what you can make with just those tools and see how far you can get. And that's just talking about the tools. We haven't even gotten into the samples yet. The samples are huge, obviously, in production. Uh, there are a lot of producers that primarily focus on sample-based producing. Um, there are producers that are like me that focus on just sound design and then creating things from scratch. But I will say right now that every single producer that is experienced has an arsenal of sounds that they reuse almost daily. There's no shame in using the same kick if the kick sounds fat, right? There's no shame in using the same snare if the snare sounds good. There's no shame in using the same instruments, the same VSTs, all of that. There's no shame in reusing those if they sound great. Because I'll reiterate this again, nobody changes like the band members of a band every time they have a show. Nobody changes the guitar that they have or the instruments every single track. They might change the effects. They're not going to change their whole setup is what I'm trying to say. And you have to understand that when you are a producer, you are able to buy anything grab anything on the internet and use it. Nothing says that that is good or bad, but how you utilize it in your projects is very important. So if you do find a bunch of samples that you like, try to make those original by processing them a little bit, add a little bit of effects, EQ them here or there just to kind of get the flavor that you're going for. Save those as a sample pack and then just make a template out of those samples. So like make a basic eight bar loop. Literally, this is what I do. So I create an eight bar loop in my DAW on my template. And then I also have a bunch of instruments that I use in every single track. And then I save that as a template. And so every time I open my software, that same eight bar loop pops up. And then also all the instruments that I use pop up. And then from there, I literally just change it. So if I'm not feeling the, the drums, I'll just change the drums real quick. I'll keep maybe the snare and then I'll create my eight bar loop. And then I'll just start playing around freestyling the whole time. That's why a lot of my tracks don't really have like a set melody because I don't really make melodies. The way that I produce is a little different from what way that you'll produce. I never sit down and produce a melody. A lot of my melodies are just over-processed and stretched, uh, reversed, chopped sounds that I create from just playing notes on my Ableton push. And then I just go from there. So never limit yourself. 
And if you ever can't get an idea out, that is only the uh, j just the first obstacle. Because remember, as long as you're continuously chiseling away at the block of ice, you will get the sculpture that you want, or at least something close to it. But now if you just leave it alone, like you'll, you'll you know, chip a few bit of ice here or there, and then you just leave it alone for too long, the ice is going to melt before your vision is realized. And that is the the worst part of, you know, producing as a new producer or even a well-seasoned producer. A lot of times, a lot of well-seasoned producers will understand a lot of the things that I'm saying right now. And so they just continue to produce. But a lot of the things that I experienced when starting, honestly, was a lot of pushback and resistance uh, against trying to create and finish something because I felt like it wasn't ready. It wasn't my sound. It wasn't this or it wasn't that. But that's because I never mastered my tools properly. And mastering the tools that you have, the free tools to be precise, will help you so much. Like make it to where you can produce a track with just stock plugins. Make it a challenge. And when you complete that challenge, save that template and then make 10 more after that. That's what I did for my last few albums. I would created a template and I challenged myself to produce 10 tracks and I did it every time. And each time I came out with an album and I dropped in just the last year and a half, it was like over 50 tracks that I produced because I was able to make it more efficient. And if you listen to all of my music, I mean, you'll hear the similarities, but none of them are the same. None of the melodies are the same. None of the vibes are the same. And so you're really able to create a plethora of different styles and really just anything if you continue to reuse the same sound, the same plugins, the same everything, because then you get so complacent with how it is, you start to, you know, experiment here or there. You'll do this thing or that thing on one of the plugins, and then it just changes the trajectory of your track so much. And even even the way that you produce, like there, there are certain plugins, like for example, Grain Delay, I use the crap out of Grain Delay now. After watching a tutorial on Grain Delay on Ableton, I use it on almost every track because of the way that it makes the sound resonate, uh, the way that I can create transitions. There's just so many things. And that was just on my last album. So you'll always find something that will add to your process um, or take away from it. So be wary. Obviously, don't go in and like buy all of the free plugins on every single sale or don't go buy all of the on sale plugins um, when they go on sale. Uh, just get the free ones if you need them, but also don't go and get the free ones if you don't. Like if it says free and you're just getting it just because it's free, don't do it. Uh, it that, that is more clutter. And when you have more clutter, it's harder to make a decision. You'd rather have one really good EQ than 10 different EQs, right? So take the time to see what tools you have, make a list or make a template and then produce 10 tracks using that same template, the same samples, the same sound, literally the same guitar, the piano, or whatever it is that you're using. Use the same stuff and create five to 10 tracks and see where that 10th track goes. Because the first nine of them is just the practice ground. You're literally just getting the flow of how your new template is, how you're going to produce the, the the next few tracks. Once you get to the fifth track, you're going to be like, dude, I literally used all of these sounds already. How can I further the production? And that's when you start to think about the other things outside of, oh, I can get the fattest synth here. I can get the fattest 808 there. Now it's about rhythm. Now it's about the silence. Now it's about the syncopation of the different sounds that you have in the background, the stereo with all of this other stuff. You're going to start playing with different parts of the production that you didn't think that you would before because you never heard it before. The focus was always on getting the synth and the melody and, you know, the actual sound out. But nobody ever stopped to listen to their music and be like, oh, maybe I can shift the sound forward a bit or backwards a bit to create that additional dimension. And so these thoughts will only come out whenever you start to limit yourself uh, on the amount of tools that you're using, the amount of um, things that you buy, sounds that you use, 
right? Even reusing the same sound, like the same kick sound, just stretching it and then reversing it. You can get like an a like a riser effect out of it. You can make a hi hat out of it. You can get a crash out of it. I mean, you literally can make so many sounds out of the one sound, and that is what you want to do. You want to start to use the same sound and see how many times you can use it because that keeps you in the same realm of the vibe and the feel uh, because you don't, you don't venture too far off. Cause I mean, how many times have you heard a uh, track that somebody's produced that it sounds good, but then all of a sudden this lead comes in out of nowhere and then another lead comes in and then it's just too many things going on at once. Well, that's why. So you want to reuse the, the amount of sounds that you have as many times as you can before you can't. Um, and, and then you should ask yourself, okay, should I add something else? Because when you've exhausted the sounds that you already have, the instruments that you already have, then you can think about adding to the process or adding to your workflow. So just a bit of food for thought. Definitely enjoy producing music, obviously, but creating the templates will make your life easier, but also learning the tools that you have at your disposal will make it much easier. So have fun, guys. Enjoy producing. Go kill it. See you on the next one.